Hello, grade 10. Um, welcome to a Thursday afternoon. We are almost, almost, almost at a Friday. How exciting. One day almost to the weekend. Um, I am hope you're having a good day so far. Uh, but if you haven't joined us before, welcome to Information Technology. So welcome to IT grade 10. I'm the presenter. I'm Amy Nal. And at the moment, we're busy talking about some theory work. Okay, so what did we cover yesterday? So yesterday we looked at the motherboard and the components that make up the motherboard. And then we looked at um, the different types of outputs and input devices. And I said to you that I would touch on ports today. So I'm just going to go over a few basic ideas of the motherboard again. And then I want to talk about ports. And then I promised you that I wouldn't do a full week of theory but I would do some recapping. So what recaps are we going to do today? Well, today I wanna to go through trace tables and I wanna see how much time we have left and maybe we do our input output model, okay? And let's check how this works then. So I know I gave you homework, okay? And I am gonna go through the homework but what I thought I would do first is go through the ports, okay, just in case there was some of our homework that included ports so that we can cover our basis if you want to change some of those. I also want to spend some time um, chatting about the homework and we can do it as a fun interactive activity. Cool. So just to recap on the motherboard, we spoke about a few things. I spoke about the fact that it has some processing components, okay, and that's your GPU and your CPU. And we spoke about the fact that your GPU is in charge of um, displaying the images. It is, it's, it's in charge of writing the instructions to display those images. And the CPU is in charge of writing the other instructions. It's in charge of selecting what pieces of information goes where. It, it tells the, the software what to do sometimes. It's the host for some of our operating systems. We also found out, okay, that this, that this CPU, our central processing unit, has other units inside of it. So we spoke about um, our control units and we spoke about the ALU. And we learned that the ALU is in charge of your arithmetic components, okay? So that are just the components that calculate um, the different calculations to add the computer. We then looked at RAM and our slots for RAM, okay? And we looked at the fact that there was a difference between memory and storage. We also then spoke about the fact that every motherboard has different slots. And we spoke about the fact that all of these components are built together based on different things. And what were those things going to be? Well, we said that it had to be in um, modular design, okay? And it means that they're just built up of a variety of different parts. Awesome. Cool. So now today, I just want to touch on ports. So these are some of the ports that we find um, on our motherboards, and they're quite important. So the three that we're going to look at now, and there are two on the other in the next slide, okay? We have our USB port, okay? And like it says here, some of the compatible devices for that would be some input and output devices. So things like, let's say, your mouse your mouse might connect into through your USB port. We can use something like, let's say, a keyboard. A keyboard could connect to your computer through the USB port. Then there is this misconception, and I think I have said it along the way, and it's just because of something that's sort of, one of those things that gets stuck in your head that you can't get rid of. And as you carry on saying it, carry on saying it, and everyone around you carries on saying it, it becomes sort of this thing that we can't get out. But something or a big misconception that we need to realize is that we often refer to flash disks, okay, as USBs. And the reason for that is because most flash disks or flash drives plug into our USB port. Okay, so we'll refer to the actual flash drive as a USB, when in actual fact, a flash drive is a 
is a type of storage device that we just connect to the computer through a USB port, okay? It's not that we are wrong necessarily, it's just the misconception that we have sort of, it's a habit that we have to refer to it as that. So that's just one thing that we, I do need to um, bring your attention to. And like it says here, the purpose of these ports is to transfer data and instructions to and from the computer. Awesome. We then get something called an HDMI port, okay? And this is for audio as well as picture. So if we connect to our HDMI port, we can see the picture as well as hear the sound. Then we get something called a 3.5 millimeter port or what we would know for it also to be called is an aux, okay? And that is the same sort of port. So when I talk about the 3.5 millimeter port, I'm talking about that little aux port that we need, that we use to connect, like it says here, the speakers, um, your earphones, your microphones. So when we talk about our 3.5 millimeter um, port, we are always talking about a port and that enables these devices to produce some sort of sound. Cool. So these are ports that we know about all the time. They're ports that we're familiar with. Cool. Then we get something called an Ethernet port. And an Ethernet port or something called your network cable, okay? Um, I just, I mean, <laughs> I just did what I shouldn't have done and I have said another misconception. So essentially we get this thing called an Ethernet port name. Okay. Then we get something called a UTP cable. So this is an untwisted pair cable. And all of us, so like we made the mis well, like everyone has the habit of saying that a flash disk is a USB because of the port name. When we talk about a UTP cable, often we refer to this as an ethernet cable or a network cable, when in actual fact, it's actually a UTP cable, but because of the port name that it plugs into, so we refer to it as that type of cable, which is not always necessarily the case, okay? But essentially the purpose of this port is to allow the motherboard to connect to a wired network. And that's why we also call UTPs network cables because of the purpose that that port and that cable together allows us to obtain. Cool. Then we called something, then there's another port called a Thunderbolt. And unless you have a newer laptop, not many uh, laptops how it nowadays have them, but it's to connect high speed devices to the motherboard for data transfer to and from a device, okay? So for an example, nowadays, a lot of the time, um, but now I'm saying nowadays, I'm talking about very modern laptops and very modern projectors allow us to connect through a Thunderbolt. So essentially, if we think of our VGM, VGA cables and our HDMIs, a Thunderbolt port, okay, or Thunderbolt cable uses the same type of idea as our HDMI. So instead of presenting through to your data projector with an HDMI, Nowadays, we use something called a Thunderbolt, okay? And it's purely just because this, um, this cable that we plug into a Thunderbolt port is, is quite capable of projecting and producing high speeds of information, okay? It just helps for if you want to be presenting a video, for an example, there might not be a lag or the picture might not be blurred because the speed at which it's transferring that information or that data back and forth to the relevant devices is just higher than that of, let's say, a VGA, okay? Um, I know for a fact that one of the first companies to make use of Thunderbolt cables within their laptops was um, Apple, and that's on a MacBook. So my MacBook is about uh, 2015, and I have a Thunderbolt port on my Mac. Okay, so I know Mac was one of the first to start implementing this port name called Thunderbolt. But that's about it on ports grade 10. I hope that clarifies a few things because um, there were maybe one or two questions in the homework based on this. So if there were any misconceptions, I've hoped they've been um, 
ironed out, but let's look at the answers for the homework that I gave you. Okay, so we looked at it, I asked you to look at number 3.4 and I asked us to look at number one, two, seven, if I stand corrected. Cool, so this is number one. So question one asked us, we need to manipulate or we need to choose column A to column B, okay? And if you've done your homework, this shouldn't be too tricky for us, okay? But let's go through this. So for those who have done the homework, okay, um, I don't know if you want me to go through some of the, the column um, options that we had. So let's just look at the first four. So for column B, these were some of the options that we had. So we had processing devices, cores, USB, RAM, CPU, motherboard, GPU, or HDMI. Cool. So for number one, it says here, we need to determine what term briefly describes this description based on the options that I've just listed. So it says the device has connectors that allow you to connect a power supply to a computer as well as several other ports in the back so you can plug in devices easily like, in, like keyboards, speakers and monitors. Okay, grade 10, what would the answer to number, 10, number one be? Okay, so if we think of the options that we have, so some of the options, I will read through them again. We have processing devices, something like a core, um, a USB, a motherboard, a GPU. What type of device allows you to actually um, get the output for that description? Let's see, what letter did you say was the answer for number one? Let's see if anyone did it. Or I don't mind getting the term in because if we can get the term in, we can determine what letter it was. Anyone? Okay, I will send through some of the letter options that we have. Um, Okay, so those are some of the um, some of the options that we have based on column B. Okay, but if we look at this and we look at the four options that I put up, okay, well, the device has connectors that allow you to connect a power supply to the computer as well as several ports in the back. Okay, well for me that seems very much like G. Okay, like G. And that's the motherboard. So number one's answer is G, that's our motherboard. Cool. So if we look at number two, it says most input devices and most output devices, flash drives, printers, smartphones can plug into this type of port. Okay. So what would the answer be even if um, we haven't necessarily gone through the options? Okay. The answer for this is quite simple. It's maybe simpler than number one, okay? Does anyone wanna try? What would the term be that describes the statement at number two? It would be your USB port, okay? So the answer is C, our USB port. Cool. So number three said, these devices are computer devices responsible for carrying out instructions and performing calculations. So this should have been easy, right? Because it's something I actually just went through in the beginning of this lesson. And we then know that this would be some sort of processing device, okay? We don't know which one just yet. So the answer would be A, it would be our processing devices. Cool. So number four, it says you can increase the processing power that is available to the computer by doing what to the CPU, okay? This is where I spoke about yesterday. It's one of the options on the chat for us. So what allows us to increase the processing power of our CPU? If we add multiple cores, Okay, so the answer would be B. 
if we add multiple cores to our CPU, it will actually allow us to increase the processing power. Okay, so as you can see, those are the answers from one to four. Motherboard, USB, processing devices, and core. Cool. cool. Then look, let's look at these ones. So it says monitors, projectors, televisions, and speakers can plug into this type of port. Okay, so some of the options that we had, okay, some of additional options, we had something like our RAM, we had another option called HDMI, we had um, another option called just CPU without the control units. But essentially, there was one word I've already mentioned, and that was our HDMI, because we know that monitors, projectors, televisions, and speakers can definitely plug into an HDMI port. Cool. So for number six, okay, they're basically asking, what are independent processing units that complete tasks on their own? Okay, what are independent processing units that complete tasks on their own. And that would be something like a CPU, okay? And they independent, that's what made it very clear to me. So we know that the different processing units could be a CPU, a GPU, and that is why based on the answers that we were given or based on the options that we were given, we knew that the letter would be E because it would be a CPU. Cool. Then they say, what is volatile? Okay, meaning that all data is lost once the electricity is disconnected or the power is lost. So already I didn't have to give you, okay, I didn't have to give you any terms for that. You should have known that already RAM. RAM is volatile. So that letter was D in the options from the homework and the term is RAM, so RAM is volatile. So that means that when we lose um, power to our device, all the memory that was stored in the RAM is lost. Cool, and there we go. We have our HDMI, our CPU and our RAM. Awesome. So let's look at the last two. So the last two here, it says there's something located in plug-in cards in the chipset, okay, on the motherboard or in the same chipset as the CPU. So now we're thinking, okay, so now maybe it's basically contained in the same components as the CPU. And this is responsible for doing or creating some sort of calculation. Well, I spoke about this before, and I said that it would be some sort of what, okay? We need to display an image. We just need to make sure that we've actually decided, is it calculating a calculation, or is it calculating the idea of what image needs to be displayed? In this case, we needed to realize that it was an image. So the term we use here is our GPU, and that was option or letter number H. Then for number nine, it says this unit coordinates activities for all other units in the system by controlling the transfer of data and information between various units, initiating the appropriate actions by the ALU, okay? So we know that this happens in the CPU. So the term over here would be CPU and that would be F. Okay, so let's go through that. The GPU is located in plug-in cards, okay, and the GPU is responsible for creating and doing calculations to display the image on the screen, where the CPU is the unit that coordinates all the other units in the system. Okay, so I hope that um, clarifies a few things for you. Um, but now we're going to move on to some true and false statements. And I really want you guys to start getting involved with me here. Okay, so let's look at the first statement. I want to know from you guys out there, is it true or is it false? A function of the motherboard is to provide a place for other devices or interfaces to be installed. Come on, grade 10. Is this true or is this false? Someone help me out here.
you guys are so it's true thank you so much this is a hundred and fifty percent true okay the function one of the three functions of the motherboard that we spoke about yesterday is to 150 percent provide a place for other devices or interfaces to be installed okay what other type of in what other devices are installed on the motherboard let's say for an example a storage device could essentially be installed on the motherboard Okay, then let's look at B. By adding multiple cores to a CPU, the processing power available to the computer can increase dramatically. Is this true or is this false? Okay, so we have two trues, let's go. Okay, by adding multiple cores to a CPU, the processing power available to the computer can increase dramatically. And this is true, grade 10. We've spoken about this. We even looked at it in the previous slide. Look at you go. Okay, then let's look at C. All arithmetic or logical operations are, are performed on the data that is available in the CPU and sent back to the main memory after processing is done. Is C true? Or is it false? Be careful with C. C is the tricky one. Is C true or is C false? Ooh, ooh, we were doing, it's false, 150%, it's false. Why is it false? Okay, so the reason that this is false grade 10 is the fact that the CPU does not perform the actual arithmetic and logical operations. The ALU, so the arithmetic logic unit within the CPU performs those arithmetic logical operations. So we just have to be very careful. So C is 150% false, okay? Then D, let's go. RAM provides space for your computer to read and write data to be accessed by the CPU. Is this true or is this false? Come on, grade 10, don't let me down. It's true. 150% this is true okay ram is this is the memory that provides the space for your computer to read and write the data to be accessed by the cpu awesome awesome stuff grade 10 i'm loving the interaction let's keep it up okay then the next thing that we had to do for homework is we had to go through whether this device was an input processing or output device. Um, this is something that should come naturally to you now. Why? Because we went through so many of these yesterday and the day before, actually this whole week. Okay, so let's go through this. Is a mouse an input processing or output device? Go team, a mouse. It's an input. Look at you go. Okay, this is 150% an input device. We are interacting, okay? We are interacting with our screen and clicking on, let's say, our different applications by making use of a mouse. Amazing. Okay, then we talk about a GPU, and you better get this, grade 10, because I've literally said this about a hundred times in this lesson. Is a GPU okay an input processing or output device it's a hundred and fifty percent a processing device okay and what else gave it away is the fact that it's called a graphical processing unit the name even gave it away awesome 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 a monitor a monitor is a monitor it's an output 150% it's an output. It is displaying some sort of picture to me, okay? I am not giving it information. It is giving me information, okay? A touchpad. Is a touchpad an input? It's an input. 
this is amazing okay these are this is an input why because it replaces in some cases the interaction that we have let's say with a mouse let's say for an example on a laptop we could use a touchpad as the replacement for a mouse cool then we go to speakers speakers it's an output Okay, you beating me to this. No, but seriously, I'm so happy we're all on the same page. It's an output. But my next question is, we get different types of output now. Think about it. Okay, think about the senses that we have. Okay, we can, we can see, we can smell, we can touch, we can hear. Okay, what type? It's audio. It is 150%. So, when we talk about output devices, okay, and I will speak about this later on, but not this week, okay. When we talk about output devices, every output device has its own type of output data. Okay, so the data from the output, the, the output data has some sort of type, and that type is based on the senses that we use. Do I feel that that output? Do I hear that output? Do I see? Okay, so if we had, a, like we said, the monitor was an output device, what type of output would an, a monitor have? It would have a visual output because we can't hear the monitor. Like if I close my eyes, okay, you can't hear the monitor. You might be hearing your fan that is going through your laptop, but it's not the monitor making a noise, okay? We visually see that output. For the speakers, okay, if I block my ears, okay, 150%, so I love that. So it says you can feel the sound if it's loud enough. So people that are deaf, okay, also have a feeling, okay, they have a touch sensation. So although it's audio and we hear, okay, it's always going to have an audio output, but we also need to remember that we reuse our senses in different ways. So let's say a deaf person, although we feeling, okay, although we feeling that music, let's say for an example, and they can hear the, and they can feel the vibrations. What's happening in their senses is they actually um, hearing that music through the touch. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And it's such an amazing concept. And when we go through these different types of output, um, we talk about different types of outputs, and I will talk about them later on. It's such an interesting concept. And it almost allows you to start thinking of your senses in such different ways. Okay, processing units. A CPU, I'm not even going to go through this, it's in the name, it's a processing device. I bet you you all typed it in while I was rambling, and then you all pushed enter. <laughs> okay, but I love that, it's a processing device. And a keyboard, what is a keyboard? Look at you, you all typed input in and was waiting for me to ask so you could push enter. Okay, you are on the ball grade 10, I'm so proud of you, okay, this is amazing. Then I said to you that we were going to look at some other questions and questions that um, you could possibly be asked in a test scenario, okay? So it might not be asked um, in the way we've looked at before, but this is a more test-based question. So in for number four, they gave us some sort of comparison. So it was an advertisement between two computers. Um, I'm just gonna read a few things. So the, the one, compu computer number one, had a R5 CPU, whereas the computer two had an I7 CPU. Um, they had the computer one with four gigabytes of RAM, where computer two had eight gigabytes of RAM. They ran, both ran on Windows 10, and they both had a two-year warranty. The one's monitor was bigger than the other, just basic facts like that. So it says, yeah, based on these advertisements for the following, we needed to answer following questions. And the questions was, the first one said, the first computer does not include a separate GPU. Okay, so they're saying that there isn't a separate graphical processing unit. Okay, will this computer be able to display 3G graphics? Okay, so 
Let's go through this. Essentially, it will, as I said here, yes. Okay. The CPU will take on the role of the GPU for the case that it doesn't exist because it's still going to process the data of that picture. Will it process it to the best of the capability? Maybe not always. So let's say for an example, you have an HD screen, a very clear screen, but you don't have a GPU running in the background. That monitor may not always run at its full potential, but it will still have some sort of image. Okay, so these are just the types of questions you could get in a test. Then for B, it said, what is the function of Intel Core i7 CPU in the second computer? Okay, so we know that the Intel is one of the biggest manufacturers for CPU components, okay? So even without them having to say, what is the function of the CPU, we should have known, okay, Intel Core i7, this is our central processing unit. And what is the function of our CPU? Well, it's to process all the information in and out, or all the data coming in and out. Okay, cool. Then the last question said C. The second computer has more RAM than the first one. Okay, so the first one only had four versus the second one, which had eight gigabytes. How do you think this will benefit the second computer? Okay, so let's run through some logic here. Okay, so obviously, as you can see, the answers in front of you, and it says it will have more working memory and will be able to process data quicker. Okay, so let's think of a book. Okay, and if there are 100 pages of a book versus 20 pages of a book. A book with 100 pages has more information and maybe necessarily we can get more out of it than, necessary, than a book with 20 pages. But now, I mean, it obviously depends on the information that the book has. I'm not talking about that, but I'm just talking about the fact that because there's more memory and there's more space, okay, for that information to be stored, it allows that working memory to process quicker. Let's think of an example, okay? And this is going to be such a silly example, but it logically makes so much sense. If you have a full um, washing basket, and now you're missing one sock, and you have one washing basket that's full, you're going to spend more time looking for that one sock, right? Then if you had, let's say, five washing baskets and only one of those were allocated to socks, then you could have only gone through socks. So basically, I hope that doesn't, <laughs> I hope I haven't confused you about washing, but essentially all I mean is that the smaller the memory, the less space it has to almost separate and process individual pieces of information. Whereas the more space it has, the more um, streamlined that process becomes. Okay, cool. So that was the homework. That sort of wraps up a lot of um, what I wanted to go through with regards to inputs, output, output devices, the motherboard and the case. So today I also want to discuss to you the difference between computers and mobile devices. So I just wanted to, um, just mention what I'm referring to as a mobile device in this case. And essentially, it's just a device that performs many of the functions of a computer. So for an example, browsing the internet or running basic software programs, okay? Majority of mobile devices, let's say for an example, like our smartphones, most of them are touchscreen. So it just allows us to interact whole, wholeheartedly with the programs and applications on the phone. Awesome. So what I wanted to do is you'll see how I've separated it here, okay? This is in comparison to our input devices. And basically I've said, well, if it was a desktop and if it was a smartphone, what would it do? Or what, how would it differ? Okay, so let's look at our input devices in terms of a keyboard. Uh, so if you think of 
typing on a full screen, a full size keyboard versus let's say a touch screen keyboard. Um, I don't know about you, but I think it's a lot easier to type on my PC, let's say for an example, an essay versus trying to type an essay on my cell phone because the keyboard is smaller. So some fun facts, a full sized keyboard is approximately when we talk about um, typing records, we talk about processing, having, see at least someone agrees with me. Thank you, thank you, okay. So when we talk about world record typing and when it comes to how many, how many words per minute we can type, okay. The world record for typing on a full sized keyboard is 216 words per minute. Madness, madness, madness. Um, there is quite a fun site that you can test this on. Um, and if you practice all the time, if you just go to Google and type in practice typing, there are so many sites that will do this. Um, quick fingers, 100%. So I think I've gotten to maybe like 140. Uh, and then it was because I had practiced with the kids in my class. Like I said, okay, every day for a week, we'll do five minutes of typing. And I honestly think we got to about 140. I mean, we're talking about 216 words. That's madness, mad madness, okay? But that's on a full-sized keyboard. If we're talking about a smartphone keyboard, they're saying that on average, okay, the world record for that, so the quickest typing is 100 words a minute. I'm sure some of you would be able to definitely uh, put that person to a challenge, okay? And it'd be interesting to find out. But um, so that, so we're talking about two, almost double, double that, okay. Then if we're talking about a mouse, so computers uh, allow for more accurate inputs. So like for an example, my Bluetooth mouse doesn't work on my smartphone which logically doesn't make sense necessarily, which it does, but it's not Bluetooth compatible. So my Bluetooth mouse, I cannot connect to my, um, to my smartphone, obviously, because it doesn't have a pointer allocated in it. It has a touch screen. So it relies on the touch for movement. Okay, um, there are some tablets that are, that are mouse sensitive. So you can connect to Bluetooth mouse to your tablet. Okay, but just know we can use a stylus with a touch screen instead of the mouse, just to improve that accuracy of the input. Then if we look at cameras, okay, most modern smartphones have higher quality cameras. Okay, so this makes video calling easier. It makes taking photos easier. But in saying that a lot of laptops, depending on the brand, also have just as good, um, cameras built in versus the lower cameras on a smartphone okay then if we look at microphones okay since microphones are needed to make calls all smartphones come with microphones built in believe it or not not all laptops all come with microphones so 150% it may have a, a small built-in microphone for audio, but for a professional use microphone, you might, like it says, you have to buy an additional one, okay? And then if we look at biometric devices, we spoke about what that was. We spoke about iris recognition, fingerprints, facial recognition, and this is high-end smartphones are released with retina scanners, face identification, fingerprint readers, um, and lots of computers allow this as additional add-on, so you can go to the shop and buy it. But I know that Dull, Dull is one of the, our biometric, 150%, so this is what I was just about to say. So a Dull, so not a Dull, the singer, but a Dull, like a Dull top laptop, the brand Dull. <laughs> sorry, um, they, a lot of their newer, more expensive, expensive um, computers have fingerprint scanners built in, okay? So let's think of an example. Uh, I wish I had put a picture up, but you actually can walk into Dion Wired. It's a little device. It's about, let's say about five or six centimeters. And it's literally, um, how many of you have gone to a bank? And they've asked you to please scan your finger in or they've and basically they have external 
biometrics. They have external fingerprint scanners, where let's say if you want to open your first bank account, 150%. So there's someone on here that's gone through that. So um, there are so many biometrics available for desktops, believe it or not. And one of the most common ones is if you have to go to, a, so if you haven't, take your time when the lockdown's over, okay? Just walk past one of the cashiers in a bank. Like, don't do it dodgily now, obviously. Um, but you'll see they've got these little uh, fingerprint scanners. And it's just for identification for the people that, are, that they're dealing with from time to time. Okay. So that's desktop versus smartphone in terms of input devices. Okay. So let's look at output devices now. So if we look at output devices, the most comparison that we look at, or the most common comparison for output put devices in terms of desktop versus smartphone is the monitor size and the speakers that it comes with. So obviously we know this, it might be easier to maybe watch a video on um, a desktop versus on your phone. So, I mean, let's say for an example, if I'm presenting a lesson to you and I have smaller writing, it might be easier to see it on your desktop PC um, and your laptop versus let's say your cell phone. Okay, so it just means that while the monitor of a desktop computers are larger, you also need to remember that smartphones have better resolution. Okay, so it's also catch 22 the whole time. It might be easier to see, but it might be blurry and more clear on your phone. Okay, cool. So it seems like I have seriously run out of time today. Sure, grade 10, I've been waffling major, okay? So I'm just quickly going to go over the comparison of storage devices, and then um, we will carry on with how we compare these smartphones and laptops tomorrow, okay? Uh, plus wide communicate connection is better than wireless. Okay. So, so many people will agree or disagree. So someone on the chat has said, um, wired connection is better than wireless. And there are so many people that agree or disagree, okay? All of it has its pros and its cons. I just use a Bluetooth mouse because it was the only one available in my home. And I just wanted to divide and I needed a mouse. Okay, then if we, if we consider um, storage devices, we talk about internal, external and CD or DVD. We obviously know that smartphones are not applicable for CD and DVD. So although we can buy a device that does it, no internet connection. Oh, 100%. Okay. Completely agree. Completely agree with that. Okay. So although we can buy a, an external device that will allow us to use a CD or DVD with our smartphones, and believe it or not, you do, do get something like that, they're very expensive. Very, very, very expensive. Cool. So if we think of external storage, okay, for both of them, external storage can be um, purchased, uh, although it's more affordable, obviously, for our desktop or our, or our laptop, okay. Some smartphones don't allow you to add additional storage. What brand of smartphone does not allow you to add additional storage? Apple, 100%. I'm a major, I'm a major Apple fan. Um, I'm sure you, you know, someone raised their hand, talk to me. Um, so I am a major Apple fan, but purely just because I was raised in an Apple household, not because I wasn't raised in a Windows, it's just what I know, okay. But Apple, no external storage. And then internal, um, obviously we know we can store a lot more on a desktop computer or a laptop versus a smartphone, okay. So that's all we have time for today. What I will do is I'll quickly wrap up tomorrow. I'll finish the comparison of how we compare these devices in terms of um, desktops and smartphones. And then we're going to look at trace tables again. Okay, but thank you so much, grade 10. Um, what a great Thursday lesson. Okay, sorry for rambling. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy your afternoon further. Have a great day. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you very much, teacher. Class well presented, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you. I didn't realize it was five minutes. I was like, there's no ways. That went so quickly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.